Sushruta for Neat is now available on the Google Play Store. Try it out for free. Hello, my dear students. Hearty welcome to this biology class. Me, GK Bhatt. In today's class, we shall take up the evidences for evolution. There must be some proof for evolution. Yes. There are proofs, proof from different disciplines of science, out of which the most valued evidence comes from what is called paleontology. Paleontology is the study of the dead remains of the organisms which lived in the past what you call fossils. Fossils are the dead remains of the plants and animals which lived in the past but are not seen today. Of these uh, plants and animals, animals got better preserved than the plants because the soft body of the plants generally get deteriorated, decayed before they undergo fossilization. Fossilization is the formation of a fossil. For the fossil to be formed, there should be congenial conditions. And most of the fossils that you come across now, they are found in what is known as sedimentary rocks. The sedimentary rocks, they get deposited layer after layer in the crust of the earth. So amongst the evidences from different branches of biology, fields of biology, the best evidence is from the field of paleontology. Paleontology deals with the study of fossils because it is a direct proof. Now, if at all we say that the dinosaurs lived for a very long time, for several millions of years, we have a proof because we are getting the fossils of the dinosaurs from different parts of the world. So now let us continue this. I shall send one record with regard to the woolly mammoths. I will share it to today with you in the group. And it shows you or it gives you some account of the mammals which are 10 times in the weight and size when compared to present day elephants which lived in the Arctic area. Let me give you the information about that. So now coming to this point, whatever is mentioned in the NCIT book, I already told you about, in my last class, about the dinosaurs. Dinosaurs dominated the earth about 180 million years ago. Dinosaurs lived between 230 to 65 million years ago in a time known as Mesozoic era. They lived for nearly 165 million years. This is what I have showed you in my last class. And I have also given you some information about these different uh, dinosaurs. And the questions in the last uh, year before last year, some questions asked on this uh, dinosaur also. Now let us look into another field of science which gives evidence with regard to the evolution, proof with regard to the evolution. 
comparative anatomy and morphology shows similarities and differences among organisms of today and those that existed year ago. You have learned that what mammals you see today, they are all evolved from the reptiles. It is the same reptiles they have given birth to the yews also or birds. So reptiles evolved on one hand into birds, on the other hand they evolved into mammals. Reptiles evolved from amphibians. Amphibians evolved from that of the fishes. Fishes evolved from that of the cyclostomes. Jawless vertebrates. Uh, they evolved from the protocardates. Protocardates evolved from non -cardates. You also know that uh, protozoan like uh, animals evolved to peripherans, peripherans evolved to serrated and tenophores, and these evolved into that of the helminthes which you want to annelids. Annelids on one hand gave rise to the molluscs, on the other hand to arthropods. And these molluscs you want to the echinoderms. Echinoderms you want to that of the hemicordates. Hemicordates you want to the protocordates. So this is how the evolution has taken place. Now let us see some of the evidences with the evolution as given in the NCRT book. So let us see this particular evidences from the field of comparative anatomy and morphology. So these four limbs perform different functions in these animals. They have similar anatomical structure. You look into the four limbs of these animals. Bat, whale, cheetah, man, or to that extent any of these uh, mammals, look into the four limbs of the monkeys, four limbs of the horses, four limbs of the bat, four limbs of the whale, four limbs of the human beings. If you look into these four limbs, and to that extent of four limbs of the birds, four limbs of the reptiles, four limbs of the amphibians. In all these, you will see the four limbs is made up of the same type of bones. Whether you take a amphibia, like a frog, or you take a lizard, or you take a any bird, or mammal. In all these animals, four limbs is made up of the bone in the upper arm called humerus, what you see here. The bone in the lower arms, you have ulna, right? Look here. One minute. Okay. You have the bones here. What are the bones? Have you heard about that in the first year? What bones you have studied? You have one bone here. You have Right? Next bones here? In the lower arm? Anyone knows? Radius and ulna. There are two bones. And you have bones here. Carpus, metacarpus, phalanges. In all these animals, look here of a man, cheetah, whale, bat. These are all the bones. Same. This is what? Humerus bone. In all you come across humerus bone. And in all you come across radius and ulna, radius and ulna, right? Then you come across the carpals, then you come across metacarpals and phalanges. Now this is what we are telling here. Though these the four limbs perform different functions in these animals, they have similar anatomical structure. All of them have humerus, radius, ulna, carpals, metacarpals, and phalanges in their four limbs. What bones you have in your fingers? These are the phalanges. 
what most support your palm region these are the metacarpus and what you bones you have in the wrist region these are the carpus you have two bones here radius and ulna you have one bone here humerus and these bones are found in all these animals right from amphibia to mammalia what it indicates now yeah what it indicates is it not that uh, frog is related to you or you are related to frog no sir no then why that the frog is having the same type of bone what you have don't you agree harshavardhan siddesh amphibians were your ancestors prithviraj duti rakesh if if we are not related or if we are not evolved from the same ancestor why that we have all of us we have same type of bones of course the structure is slightly different because they do a different function what do you say can you sir bless you kavita do you agree that Amphibians, reptiles, birds, mammals—all we have evolved from the same ancestor. Are you hearing me, Rakesh? Hello. Yes, sir. What do you say? Yes. Hence, in these animals, the same structure developed along the different direction due to adaptation to different needs. Your horse, in horse, the four limbs. they are adapted for cursorial mode of life what is that cursorial mode of life what is that fast running right in monkey it is adapted for climbing so these are all adaptations but basically they have same in structure this is what is called divergent evolution and these structures are called homologous structures these structures are called homologous structures and evidence is in that evolution is called divergent evolution that means they all evolved especially all these mammals you must know that all these mammals evolved from all the present day mammals have evolved from what is called tree shrews tree shrews small squirrel like or bandicoot like animal tree shrews and all whatever you see the different types of mammals they all evolved from this uh, tree shrews and this is what is called a divergent evolution and these structures are called homologous homology indicates common ancestry so what are the homologous structures structurally similar functionally dissimilar structurally similar functionally dissimilar are called homologous structures all of us in case right from amphibia up to mammalia the four limb skeleton structure is similar of course with the adaptation with the modification because of the adaptation for different uh, mode of life structure is similar function is similar because of the adaptation this is what is called divergent evolution from the common ancestor animals arise and they take up different uh, life in different habitats when they take up different life in different habitats their body structure undergo modification can you are you following me yes sir now if you look into the brain look into the brain and heart of uh, the animals if you look into the heart of uh, fishes heart is a two chamber one auricular one ventricle look into the heart of uh, amphibians three chamber You have two auricles and one ventricle. Crocodile and birds, four chamber, two auricles to two ventricles. Mammals, four chamber, two auricles to two ventricles. If you look into that, there is a similarity in the heart. In all, the brain is formed of fore brain, mid brain, hind brain. What parts are there in fore brain? What forms the mid brain? 
got from hindbrain almost the same right from fishes up to mammals that means all the pers we had common ancestor all chordates had common ancestor this is with regard to na animals in plants also thorn and tendrils of bougainvillea and cucurbita represent homology structurally similar if you look into the thorn and tendril structurally similar and as an adaptation mm. functionally dissimilar look here this is what a uh, heart of a fish and we may have type bird mammals almost it is same and this is what you have the brain this is of cyclostom lamprey bony fishes frog lizard bird all these have the same structures in the brain fore brain mid brain hind brain in all these mid brain is found of optic lobes fore brain is mainly found of uh, olfactory lobe and cerebellum hemispheres hind limb is found of cerebellum and uh, medulla why such a similarity is there unless they all evolved from the same ancestor do you agree now that we are all related we are all evolved from the same ancestor yes we have to agree this is what i am the thorn for protection in bougainvillea and a tendril for climbing in cucurbita structurally similar functionally dissimilar very important structurally similar functionally dissimilar these are called homologous organs you will be asked what is homologous organs and what is analogous organs homologous and analogous organs right clear now homology is based on divergent evolution whereas analogy refer to situation exactly opposite homology homology means what do you mean by homologous similar he is based on the divergent evolution you do see what is divergent evolution an organism as i said all mammals to today what you have they all evolved from a ground squirrel tree squirrel which it took a life later on the trees tree squirrel like tree shrews and later some of them took a life on the trees some of them took a life on the rivers some came down to ocean some they got into desert started leading fossorial life burrowing life some they started leading scansorial life in this way you do come across different different types of animals to take different different types of life you have what is called analogous organs if homologous organs are structurally similar functionally dissimilar analogous organs are Structurally different but functionally similar. Analogous organs are organs which are different in structure but similar in function. Look into the bat wing, wing of a bat. Look into the wing of the bird. Look into the wing of the insects. These, 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 they perform different function. They perform. Uh, similar function but they have different structure you cannot compare the wing of a bird with the wing of a bat and wing of a insect functionally they are similar but structurally they are different and this is what is called analogous organs analogous organs are organs which are structurally different functionally similar homologous organs are structurally similar functionally different so wings of butterfly bird and bat have different structure but a similar function they show evolutionary relationship this is show but it is thought that analogous organs give you any indication that this all you are from same ancestor no ancestor of a bat is a different ancestor of the butterfly is different and there is no it is thought that they have you are all this you are from the same common ancestor it will not give any evidence or direct evidence analogous organs will not give direct evidence for evolution but it shows that whenever whenever they how to show how to adapt to the same type of environment they have to show certain adaptations in their structure of the body 
Hence, energy structures are a result of convergent evolution. Here, the different groups all start coming to one point. In a, in a homogeneous structure, they do show divergent evolution. Divergent, they go in different direction to just adapt to, to different uh, mode of life. These uh, analysis organs, analysis structures make the different groups of animals to come together with the different ancestry to come together for the same purpose, that is uh, the function. So, analysis structures are the result of convergent evolution, very important always to remember. Homologous structures are examples for divergent evolution, analysis structures result in convergent evolution, different structures evolving for the same function and hence having similarity. Other examples for analogy are eye of the octopus and of mammals. In both, you know, the function is the same, eye seeing, whereas the structure is slightly different. Flipper of penguins and dolphins. Flipper of penguins and dolphins, of course, they help both in this, both they help in swimming. Structure functionally same, but structurally they are different. Look here. This is what analogy eye structure of mammalian eye and octopus. Structurally, they are slightly different. Right? These are the flippers of penguins and dolphins. Functionally same, structurally different. They are called analogous organs. One can say that it is a similar habitat that has resulted in a selection of similar adaptive features. Similar habitat that makes these uh, birds, bats, and these uh, insects to come together because they have to show similar adaptive feature to live successfully in the similar habitat in different groups of organisms, but uh, towards the same function. Sweet potato, that is the root modification. Potato, that is the stem modification, is another example for analogy. You must know which are the examples for uh, homologous and which are the examples for analogous uh, organs. Sweet potato, and potato. Sweet potato is root modification, potato is stem modification. This is also another example for analogy. In the same line of argument, similarities in the proteins and genes performing a given function among diverse organisms gives clues to common ancestry. These biochemical similarities point to the same shared ancestry as the structural similarities among diverse organisms. Now, even all I say, what enzymes they get to produce it? And what these enzymes are made up of? You take the enzymes of that of the frogs, secreted in different parts of the Almid canal, and compare these enzymes with that of the enzymes produced in any mammal. We do come across a certain similarities. Why such similarities exist? And you may be knowing that thyroid hormone produced by the mammal, mammal, any mammal, if at all it is introduced into the tadpole larva of a frog, it enables the tadpole of tadpole larva of frog to metamorphose. The tadpole larva of a frog for metamorphosis, it requires thyroid hormone. If you introduce, inject this thyroxin from that of the mammals to that of the tadpole larva, it works there. If there is no relation, how that it works? Are you hearing me? Are you understanding? Yes, sir. Yeah. These biochemical similarities point to, to the same shared ancestry as the structure similarities among diverse organisms. Just like a structure similarities among diverse organisms, biochemical similarities also gives us some idea with the evolution. Of course, in your syllabus, it is not included all the evidences and only few lines are mentioned here. Another interesting observation supporting evolution by natural selection comes from England. Let us see. This is the best example for Natural selection. What is this sir? example? Let us look at it. This study was conducted by scientist by name H.B.D. Kettlewell. Not mentioned in your NCT book. The name of this person? No doubt. H.B.D. Kettlewell. He did wonderful experiment on what is called the Bistan Betularia and Bistan Betularia Carbonaria 
these are the two types of moths let me just tell you what is this experiment about and how that it is taken as the best example for natural selection right this is what you have one moth you know you know there are what is called moths and butterflies anyone know the difference between moths and butterflies moths and butterflies come on who will tell me anyone who knows the difference between the moths have you heard about this and butterflies do they have you heard about this moths yes, and butterflies who has heard about this who knows have some knowledge about this moths are the insects they belong to insecta arthropoda these are quite active during night time butterflies are active during day time what you see beautiful insects flying around you flying around the flowers butterflies and you see moths at the night time these are nocturnal and butterflies are diurnal active right and always butterflies have club shaped antenna if you look into the antenna at the tip of the antenna you have club this antenna with the club like structure a rounded structure club shaped antenna and moth cell moth cell feathery antenna have you heard about this navya navya yes sir yes heard or no yes sir i have heard about it whether evolution is over no sir i heard about it in 10th i think but uh, 10th okay so this is what feathery antenna and this is club shaped antenna in the butterflies butterflies are beautifully colored moths are sober colored dull colored and whenever butterflies sit butterflies always hold their wings parallel to the ground or they fold the wings and bring back both the wings fold the wings on the back of the body and moths always hold the wings at the sides of the body you know these are some of the differences between moths and butterflies i am now just telling about you biston betularia and biston betularia carbonaria these two, two species names are not mentioned in your ncert book species names are not given biston betularia biston betularia carbonaria can you see the biston betularia carbonaria here this is biston betularia pepper moth white colored with the black black dot there and this is what you have biston betularia carbonaria dark colored moth right now what is what is the situation here but these particular butterflies they were abundant prior to 1920 prior to 1920 that is before industrialization industrialization this biston betularia population was more than biston betularia carbonaria population this was less this was more when when before industrialization <coughs> before the start of industries where at london <coughs> but what happened after industrialization in uh, 1920 there were more dark winged moths western betularia carbonaria in the same area that is the proportion was reversed before it was a uh, western betularia pepper moth it was more in number dark winged moth was less in number before 1920 before the starting of industries after the establishment of industries it was found that the dark winged moths were increased in number and the peppered moth that decreased in number the explanation put forth for this observation is that predators will spot a moth against a contrasting background what happened what happened was that prior to industrialization of course you must know who is the predator for this moth predator was the bird predator was the bird so when when before industrialization when the birds used to go on prey 
they could uh, they could uh, see before that now uh, another important point i have to tell now what happened was <coughs> prior to industrialization when these monks used to take a rest at night time they are not the night man they used to rest on the bark of the tree they used to take a rest hello they used to rest on the trees on the bark and the bark also had good growth of lichens there were lichens on the bark of the tree prior to industrialization when these uh, peppered moth used to rest okay. their color it came up with the color of lichens that it is were encrusted with the lichens so lichens body color and this so hak tarwa idne ha madala please please unmute yourself by letting me cast you are doing some other work please so prior to industrialization whenever this western betularia moss used to take rest on a bark of the tree their color matched with the lichens which grew on this uh, bark of the tree it matured and birds could not easily locate them could not easily locate them so the birds used to prey more on this particular form that is the western betularia carbonaria so prior to industrialization the population of western betularia were more than western betularia carbonaria so pepper moth color pepper moth color matched with the background color so they got the protection prior to 1920 at that time these dark color moths were easily spotted by the birds and birds used to eat them more but after industrialization what happened the smoke soot whatever that got released into the air it started these smokes soot etc they started settling on the bark of the tree they started killing this lichen almost all the lichens got killed and the bark also became dark in color and and uh, under these circumstances when the pepper moth used to rest during night time they got easily spotted and these dark colored moth were were actually did not get recognized by the bird so after industrialization the birds used to play more on them more on them because they were easily spotted by the birds and these the dark colored moths were not at all spotted easily by the birds so after industrialization the number of uh, the western betularia came down but the western betularia carbonaria increased so who did, who selected them it's the nature it is a natural selection so this uh, the pepper moth experiment conducted by kettlewell this is the best example for natural selection have you understood this you see the experiment put forth during post industrialization period the tree trunks became dark due to industrial smoke and soot under this condition the white winged moth did not survive due to predator dark winged or melanized moth survive have you understood this hello have yes. you understood or you want yes, to yes, sir sarvottam yes sir is it clear yes sir vishwita yes sir lohit have you come lohit namrata duty yes sir understand okay lichens can be used as industrial pollution indicator you must know that lichens are always used as bio indicators they will not grow in areas that are polluted in any place if you come across very good growth of lichen it is indication that that particular place is not polluted and lichens you know which type of pollution they indicate they are sensitive what any idea lichens are very sensitive to sulfur dioxide they always indicate air pollution 
Okay? Hence, most were able to camouflage themselves and hide in the background. They survived later. Okay? I hope it is understood. The same thing. What you have in your insert book, this is the diagram. Right? Excess use of herbicides, pesticides, etc. has only resulted in selection of resistant varieties in much in a much lesser time scale. So, what is this? Herbicide, pesticide, etc. has only resulted in the selection of the resistant varieties in a much lesser time scale. DDT resistance in mosquito is the best example. Right? What is this? What is the meaning of this? I hope you know the farmers always use one or the herbicide or pesticide to protect their crop from these insects or pests. Whatever the spray that they use, chemicals they use, these chemicals, what you call pesticide, insecticide, herbicide, etc., these chemicals work best only for a few years. After that, they become useless. Why? With these insects, within a very short time, they develop some resistance power. And these insects which evolve with the resistance power, they somehow survive from these uh, repeatedly used same uh, insecticide. Therefore, every now and then, these insecticide, whatever that is used by the farmer, they have to be changed. This is very much true with regard to DDT resistance in mosquito. Earlier, mosquitoes used to get killed with just one spray of this DDT. But later, they started evolving in such a way. Some of, some of these uh, mosquitoes which survived, in spite of getting spread by DDT, they not only survived, they, how they survived? By changing their metabolic pathways. By changing their metabolic pathways. And after surviving, they reproduced and produced the new generation with more resistant uh, resistance of power. Now let me just uh, tell you, with regard to DDT. When we are all going to school, primary school, almost every year, at the time of rainy season, starting and ending, government agencies used to come to the schools. I studied in the government school. Government agencies used to come to the school. And we used to be very happy. The moment when we used to see through the windows, someone coming, three, four guys, with some tanker on their back, with some sprayer in the hand, pipeline and all, tubes and all, we used to scream, oh, like that, to hold the college, that is, I mean, school used to scream. Why? We know that after they come, we will be having another 15 days of holidays. Sometimes one week, sometimes more than that. Why? These people used to visit the government colleges and used to spray DDT to the benches, desks, roofs, walls, everywhere. And they used to go. And we were given holidays at that time. Because once it is spread, you can't sit there for some time. Because they are, they are spread to kill the mosquitoes. Those were the days in a coastal bed, people used to suffer from, on one hand, malaria, on the other hand, elephantiasis. Did I say this? Did I say this? Hello? Did I say that uh, the people used to come to school and we used to get holidays and all? Are you hearing me, Kanisa? Navya? Yes, sir. Did I say? No, sir. Okay. No, sir. So this, pardon? Rakesh? Siddesh? So, 
In uh, this way, uh, DDT, DDT, they used to spray just to, to see that these mosquitoes which were the transmitting agents for many of the dead food diseases were killed every year. But in due course of time, the mosquitoes developed a resistance to DDT also. And you, now you know, DDT use is strictly banned. It is a carcinogen. Right? Evolution is not a direct process. Another important sentence. Evolution is not a direct process in the sense of determinism. You can't, you can't decide that this evolution leads to here. It is not a direct process. And we cannot determine what is going to happen. It is a scholar, it is a stochastic process. Stochastic process non-deterministic process based on chance events in nature and a chance mutation in the organism. You can't definitely tell that this organism is going to mutate and form this organism in the future. And you can't expect that when the mutation is going to happen. Always mutation, whatever that you, if you see the evolution, you can't expect what type of human beings get evolved after another several millions of years. Can you imagine at any time? Navya? Navya? Yes, sir. Navya, have you heard about your ancestor? How handsome they were? No, sir. No? Have you heard about uh, Australopithecus? Neanderthal people? Yes. Neanderthal men? Homo magnan men? Homo habilis? Homo erectus? Have you heard about them? Yes, sir. How handsome they were? Am I right? Whether the present generation is handsome or they were handsome. You may not agree, Navya. You better show a cro magnon man and Neanderthal man and say that it is your grandfather's grandfather. Do you agree? Are you going to agree? No, sir. Why? 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 They were with the protruded jaws walking like this and all. What is a blessing? So you can't expect how we are going to evolve after several years. So evolution is not a direct process. It is not a, a deterministic process. It is a stochastic process based on chance events in nature. There is no guarantee that evolution is going to happen. When happens? What happens after evolution? We don't know. We cannot predict it. What is adaptive radiation? During its journey, Darwin went to Galapagos Island. Very important. I have mentioned about another scientist. Who is that? Yesterday discuss. Which island he visited? Janani. Janani, have you come? Yes, sir. Janani. Who was it? I mentioned about one scientist yesterday. Hello? Sir, Wallis. Wallis. Which island you visited? Malaya. Malaya Archipelago. During his journey, Darwin went to Galapagos Island. Of a particular interest, small black birds about the size of this pharaoh. Later called Darwin's finches amazed him. What is the Darwin finches? So he noticed some birds, small birds in the Galapagos Island. You must remember that this Galapagos Island is a cluster of islands, about 20 to 30 islands together. They are called Galapagos Island. It is not one island. So shall you go there? Okay. This is what Galapagos Island have. And this is the mainland of South America. What happened? When Charles Darwin was in Galapagos Island, one of the first things he noticed is the variety of finches, a bird, finches, that existed on each of the island. I said it is a cluster of islands. In each of the island, he noticed a particular variety of birds, with what is called finches, variety of finches. 
all in all there were many different species of finch which differed only in two structure beak shape overall size in all other species they are same and only one thing he noticed no difference is that beak size beak shape overall size what is that what might happen these which are called darwin's finches these are considered as the best examples for adaptive radiation what is adaptive radiation adaptive radiation originating from one ancestor originating from one ancestor origin from the same ancestor then radiating going to different habitats and forming different species different varieties adaptive radiation they radiate in a different line as a result of adaptation because of adaptation they just start forming different different groups from one particular ancestral group so darwin's finches are considered as the best example for adaptive radiation this adaptive radiation and natural selection was found at work here in this island what is that let me just show you these are all different islands together called galapagos islands okay galapagos islands and actually whatever the whatever the finches he has noticed in different islands they all evolved from one ancestral seed eating ground finch so what happened from the one ancestral one ancestral seed eating ground finch he noticed the evolution of around 15 different species from the one ancestral species what might happen let us see this process of evolution of different species in a given geographical area starting from a point and literally radiating to other areas of geography or habitat is called adaptive radiation very very important if it is asked what is adaptive radiation right what is adaptive radiation starting from a point evolving into different species one particular point one particular species evolving into different species in a given geographical area literally radiating to other areas he is called adaptive radiation from one species many species get evolved right darwin's finches represent one of the best example for this phenomena what is that adaptive radiation one particular species located one geographical area evolve into different species by radiating going to different habitats and evolve into different species so now let me just tell you here what happened so first there are only one particular ancestor that to from where it, they have come they have come from the mainland from the mainland that is the south america this particular place what you see galapagos island is about 600 kilometers away it is situated at 600 kilometers away some day one fine day this uh, seed eating ground finches just uh, made a point to visit uh, one of the islands of uh, galapagos island after coming over here they might have noticed uh, okay very nice area very nice place to stay ample for food to eat available why not to stay here they stayed there they enjoyed their life there so when there was no competitors when everything was favorable to them space to live food to eat mating partners available when everything was favorable to them they started breeding you know we have already seen if all the conditions are favorable each and every organism makes it a point to produce as many progeny as possible so they started reproducing started increasing in number and that island got over 
they just go went to another island so all the islands of galapagos island got to feed with this ancestral seed eating ground finch after some time what happened because of the increase in the population now they did not get anything on the ground because there was so too much competition now they made it a point just to, to start eating cactus seeds and parts cactus seeds and parts so whatever that was available nearby that cactus they started feeding now in due course of time that resource also started getting exhausted now what they did they just made it a point to, to eat birds and fruits during this act because of the changed diet their beak started getting modified and because of the food their body size also started getting changed there is a saying always what you are is what you eat what you eat is what you are so this first they started seed eating birds seed eating birds got changed now uh, some of this of course at that time seed eating bird means there were some still eating the seed they remained in, on the ground not that all got shifted some of them got to shifted because they found it is too much competition they started eating cactus seeds and parts when that also got exhausted exhausted some others started going for another type of food they started eating birds fruits etc at that time perhaps accidentally some of them might have got uh, to taste the insect once they started uh, tasting the insect then they might have liked it more tasteful more and more tasteful and they started eating small small insects later little bit bigger insects that made the beak to get modified all these evolved into because uh, you know insects are also of different sizes small small ants are there little bit bigger and they, that uh, you do come across wasps are there little bit bigger insects are there like that they started now evolving into different types of uh, insectivorous birds and some of them also might have that remain by eating many seeds only that's what original they were remain and they also got modified because during evolution they also change so in this way from one ancestral seed eating ground finches darwin noticed many of the different finches to to get evolved in due course of time this is the best example for natural selection have you understood this have you understood this hello difficult to understand sidesh charan and pranan rakesh understood sir understood harshavardhan vishmita sir yes sir understood shall you go ahead prathvi yes sir okay another example is of australian marsupials what is this the number of marsupials i hope you know i hope you know cas mammalia canisa you know canisa yes sir cas mammalia includes three subclasses you know you know who knows subclass 1 anyone knows anyone knows subclass 1 prototheria prototheria in course what 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 egg-laying mammals have you heard about egg-laying mammals why navya you are keeping quiet subclass 2 subclass 2 metatheria metatheria is also known as marsupialia which includes kangaroo like animals kangaroo like animals subclass 3 eutheria theria eutheria is also known as placentalia 
Placentalia. Which includes all mammals, whatever you have in India, all presented mammals found in India, they come under subclass Eutheria. So now the members of marsupial, a number of marsupial, marsupials are marsupials are metatherians. And these are mainly found in Australia, New Zealand, South America, etc. Okay. So a number of marsupials, each different from the other, evolved from an ancestor stock, but all within Australian island continent. Okay, look here. This is what? From original marsupials, one marsupial, you do come across all these uh, different types of marsupials to you all. Sir. Pardon? Sir, can you show that slide once again? Which one? The the one, yeah, this one. Okay. I have not taken on. Yes, sir, done. Okay. Now, if you look at that, just I said uh, at the beginning, from one, uh, what, that uh, all the presented mammals you are from? Presented mammals you are from? Which ancestor? I said presented mammals you are from which ancestor? What did I say? What is that ancestor called? Hello? I said that uh, I have written that also. Who will tell me? Janani. Janani. Diti. Pratiraj. Rakesh. You have not taken on that? It is very bad if at all you are not taking on the points. Sarotam, Siddhesh, Vishmita. Yes, sir. What is that? Mammals evolved from reptiles. No, I have mentioned one mammal. I said it, it was very much a small, like uh, the squirrel or a small bandicoot. Creation. Then why, why that this much of time you took? So, as I have, as we have seen, many of the presented mammals to you all, aquatic mammals, arboreal mammals, fossorial mammals, cursorial mammals, from trees through the kingdom, in Australia, if you see that marsupials, marsupials also you are from one ancestor, and you do come across all different types of marsupials here. And all these, they, they started their life in the different habitats and to adapt to different habitats, they showed structural modification, structural changes, right? This is what you have adaptive radiation of marsupials. You are supposed to remember all these examples, all these examples, wombat, kangaroo, marsupial rat, banded anteater, tiger cat, Tasmanian wolf, sugar glider, marsupial moon, cola, cola, Right? They all evolved from the same ancestor. When more than one adaptive radiation appeared to have occurred in an isolated geographical area, one can call this convergent evolution. When more than one adaptive radiation appeared to have occurred in an isolated geographical area representing different habitat, one can call convergent evolution. You notice here, that in case of in case of uh, that uh, in case of Australia, you have seen that uh, marsupials. Marsupials you are from one ancestor. All different marsupials they got into different habitats and you are into different species. At the same time, you also see at that time at that time at the same in the same Australia we had another another uh, mammal. And remember, just like a tree rose. From that tree rose, from that tree rose, all different different mammals you are. And these are these are what is called a placentals. Placentals are eutherians. So you see sometimes the evolution of a placentals 
and also evolution of marsupials marsupials both these occur simultaneously in an isolated geographical area when more than one adaptive radiation appear to have occurred in an isolated geographical area one can call this convergent evolution convergent evolution alone you take alone you take it is an example for divergent evolution together you take it is an example for convergent evolution so when more than one adaptive radiation appeared to have occurred in an isolated geographical area like uh, australia or africa etc one can call this convergent evolution look here placental mammals in australia so you have what is this placental mammals mammals with the placenta mammals with placenta we are all examples for placental mammals we have placenta we are also called eutherians placental mammals in australia also exhibit adaptive radiation when you look into only present mammals it is adaptive radiation divergent evolution if you look into only this uh, marsupials it is a uh, divergent evolution adaptive radiation leading to divergent evolution when you bring both of them together it is a convergent evolution present mammals in australia also exhibit adaptive radiation in evolving into varieties of such present mammals each of which appears to be similar to a corresponding marsupial you have present wolf we have tasmanian wolf or martial wolf if you look into that they are structurally similar almost and both of them they live in the same type of habitat now now we are seeing that one here look here this this also again, again again example important placental mammals australian marsupials both these evolved in australia now if you look into that in placental mammals what you have mouse what you have mouse you know like that if you will go to australia you see australia also you come across mouse there also but uh, this mouse is a placental mammal and this mouse is a australian or marsupial mammal just like what you have flying squirrel in india you have flying a phalanger in australia just like you have bobcat in india you have what is called a tasmanian cat in uh, australia just like we have placental wolf in india we have tasmanian wolf in australia and this is what is called convergent evolution picture showing a convergent evolution of australian marsupials and placental mammals i hope it is understood when you take one it is a divergent evolution when you consider evolution of two groups in a particular isolated area it is called convergent evolution have you followed this i want a reply from you have you followed this yes sir yes, any sir. doubt yes, sir i know that evolution you might feel little bit difficult and this uh, of course in a regular class means you have to take about 4 to 6 hours like that but uh, because we have to take uh, uh, first year topic also for you i have to go a little bit fast here okay otherwise uh, my way for dealing with the evolution is totally different shall i go ahead Yes, sir. Evolution by natural selection. Evolution by natural selection, in a true sense, would have started when the cellular forms of life with the differences in the metabolic capability originated on Earth. Evolution by natural selection, in a true sense, would have started when the cellular forms of life with the differences in the metabolic activity capability originated on Earth. Now, when I said. I said, "What all you are from where, and what you are doing to what?" I said, "Protozoans you are into peripherans, peripherans you are into serrated and serrated and this you are into the helminthes, helminthes forms you are into and this like that." I said, "Reptiles you are into birds on one hand and mammals on the other." Now the question is that when evolution start, you must know that. Evolution by natural selection. That means it happened on its own in nature. Nature selects your thing. If at all you want to understand better, if at all we are surviving today, even without taking vaccination for corona, who selected you? Who selected you? When a lot of people died of corona, if at all you are surviving. who selected you who enabled you to survive 
Nature. 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 This is what a natural selection we mean. Okay? So, whenever there is a pandemic situation, if at all we survive in that particular condition, that means we are better adapted. We are with the better resistant power. Do you think that, you know that one MP got, uh, MP died of Corona? Have you heard about him? One member of a parliament who is from Karnataka? Hello? Anyone knows his name? You don't know? None of you know? One MP by name Angadi, Suresh Angadi. He died of Corona and he was there at Delhi and he had all medical facilities available at his doorstep. But he, no one could save him. You know a famous singer died? Who is that? He also died of Corona? Yes, baby. Okay, you don't have any general knowledge? Huh? Come on. SPB. SPB. What is that? Full name. SP Balasubramanya. SP Balasubramanya. Do you think that uh, he could have saved himself? He was there in the hospital with all care taken, but uh, they could not, no one could save them. This is what nature, nature never selected them. If it was, we are surveying, we are nature selected us. Evolution by natural selection in a true sense would have started when the cellular forms of life, when the cellular forms of life with the differences in the metabolic capability originated on earth. That means right from unicellular life. You know, for a very long time, there are only unicellular forms. As we have seen yesterday, protobionts like that, gradually, whatever you see today, that got, and it took several millions of years, billions of years. Now, what does it mean? We shall study that. Biological evolution. The rate of appearance of new forms is linked to the life cycle or the lifespan. The rate of appearance of new forms is linked to the life cycle or the lifespan. What is this? What is this? New form in the sense of new species. Rate of appearance of new forms is linked to the life cycle or the lifespan. How big is the lifespan of the organism? How big is the life cycle of an organism? Based on that, the rate of appearance of a new form will be there. Have you read it any time? Have you read it any time during your 18 years of life? 16. Because uh, girls never reach 18. 16 years of life. Or have I seen during the past uh, 60 plus years of my life, I have not encountered in any newspaper or in any of these uh, TV channels that a new species of human beings was discovered. Or have you read anywhere recently, now and then, very now and often, a new species of mammal got discovered? If you look into that, which one you will find always more and more? Is it a mammal? Is it a bird? Is it a reptile? Is it amphibia? Or is it fishes? Or is it some other animal? Always. If you look into this, new species discovery is more in a number when you look into the lifespan of that organism is a generally small one. Microbes that divide fast have the ability to multiply and become billion, millions of individuals within hours. My question, can anyone answer me? Why that new species evolve more in a the organisms whose life cycle or lifespan is so small, short, 
than the animals whose life span is so long? Come on. Who will answer this question? I hope you understood my point. You understood my point? Or to make it very clear, I shall tell you. You see that, if at all you see, every alternate week in the, in the scientific journal, we encounter dozens of new and new species of insects getting discovered. Very few new species of fishes get discovered. Further less species is generally found in case of these birds or no species to discover. Almost it is said that almost whatever we know the mammals are present on this earth, we know almost 100% these mammals. So, if you look into the new appearance of new form, appearance of new form is always more in uh, the organisms which have short lifespan than which have long lifespan. My question to you is that, how you answer this question? What answer you have for this? Quick, quick, quick. Have you understood my question, which was? Vishwas? Yes, sir. Have you understood my question? Yes, sir. Chinmay, have you come? Navya, can you answer? Who will answer? Hello, you must think, I say. So, if you look into that, now, the animals which have shorter life span, shorter life span, or shorter life cycle, that means, now you know, there are some insects, most of the insects, they breed within 15 days of their birth. Within 15 days, they finish their life cycle, and they die. The shorter the life span, shorter the life cycle, they evolve very fast, they multiply very fast, and if at all any evolution is there, any mutation takes place that gets reflected immediately. And this mutation makes them to just, uh, this mutation makes them to just uh, evolve into the new species. Microbes that divide fast have the ability to multiply and become millions of individuals within hours. So, within hours, you know, bacteria like uh, organisms, they multiply within 20 minutes. In the 20 minutes, a new generation. After another 20 minutes, another new generation. After 20 minutes, one more new generation. That means, if it any mutation takes place, which results in a change in the phenotype, that gets exhibited in the very next generation. And if at all such mutations get that accumulated, that results in new species. Have you understood this concept of Prathviraj? Yes, sir. Yeah. Microbes that divide fast, have the ability to multiply and become millions of individuals within hours, within hours. And this aspect I'm going to take up in my next class. I will start from here, biological evolution. Okay.